everybody, this is Roberto Blake, and in today's Photoshop manipulation tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we create an abstract abduction image. So we're going to show a character being abducted um, by aliens. So that's what we're going to be doing today, and we're going to be using a variety of techniques. We're going to be doing some color casting, we're going to be doing masking, we're going to be doing composite work, and we might even get into some other special effects. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to um, select and mask out our uh, main model here. And uh, we're going to do that pretty um, easily with the quick selection tool. So I'm just going to speed through that so you don't have to deal with uh, watching me sit here and mask. If you're interested in masking, uh, I have several tutorial videos you can check out on various masking techniques. All right, so we've masked out our um, figure here, and we're just gonna pull this guy out. We're going to minimize, minimize, minimize. And we're gonna drag him onto our main canvas here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert him to a smart object. And what this is going to allow us to do is to scale our image of our model down non-destructively. And if we decide we want to resize him again to be um, larger, we can do that without it being a problem or without us losing our quality as we go on here. So that's very convenient and that's exactly what we're going to want to do in this case. So as a frame of reference, we'll just put him here for now and we'll see how he ends up scaling uh, when we uh, put the background that we're gonna use in here. So with the background, we're gonna be using this landscape. We're gonna alter it once we get um, to our main image. So one of the things we're gonna do here is we're gonna resize. I think that's enough of the feel for um, somebody to get the idea that he's in a field here. So we're going to do that. And that's a good start. We've got some other things going on. We don't need our um, landscape anymore. We've got what we need here. So we're off to a good start already. And that's actually looking really good. Let's go ahead and just zoom in so that we can get a feel for that. So we like where this is going already. And essentially, you have a basic composite here, but we're not going to leave it at that. We want to try and blend these things together a bit more so that they look uh, more natural and realistic. And one of the things I'm uh, going to want to do is I'm going to want to uh, change the angle just a bit of our character so that he's not entirely, you know, straight on as if he were you know, standing on the ground still. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to add um, some color effects to blend this all together and some casting, and we're going to change things up a bit. So let's go ahead and start with a color uh, gradient map. And we're going to change our blend mode to color and maybe 22%. Uh, We're going to see how we feel about some different ways of approaching this. And we may not go with this particular color gradient. We might do some other things, but um, we might even try some other blend modes. The main thing is to play around with this and see what you think works best for your image. So I've decided that I kind of like this look, but there might be other things that I do to change this as we go on. 
and to affect the color background. So we may or may not keep this. And we may do some other things. We may choose to darken the sky a bit. But for now, we're going to leave this in place and let's compare it to what we had. Now, another thing we can do is we can um, actually adjust some things specifically on the background to make this more visually interesting. So I kind of like a little bit of what's going on there, even with having that treatment on the character. But there are some areas where I'm going to want to tone it down. So I'm going to select the black brush, click on the mask here. I'm going to do a little bit of selective masking and I'm going to um, reduce my opacity maybe to something light, like 20%. And I'm gonna take just a little bit of this out in terms of the brightness and contrast. All right, I like where this is all going. And I'm going to go ahead and group my adjustment layers. I'm just gonna toggle them off for a second. I wanna take a look at uh, this image. I wanna take a look at our background. And there's some things I wanna experiment with here and see what we can do uh, about this background. I'm going to try applying um, a dark to light gradient map. All right, so that's interesting. And let's try that on an overlay. And now let's activate our adjustment layers again. So that's doing something a little different. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. But I think comparatively, that's starting to look better. Maybe we just tone down how much of it we have in play here. Or we leave the darker, harsher elements of it in some places and then we apply some masking. So let's leave it at about maybe 60% because I think it's more interesting that way. And then let's just apply some uh, masking with a brush here. Maybe 40%. And just take a little bit more of this harshness out in some areas. Keep it brightened up. All right, so that's starting to look interesting. Let's start to get some casting on here for our alien abduction. Let's go ahead and set an overlay. Um, no, let's set a screen blend mode. And let's go ahead and adjust our brush And let's actually manipulate our brush. Let's um, get something like this going on to create a beam. And we're gonna make that smaller. We're gonna reduce the opacity to maybe 10 so we can do this more gradually. Let's reduce the opacity a little more. All right, so that already starts to become something interesting. And then we're gonna counter that by darkening some of these areas. To create more focus.
And then we're going to create just a few optics here. Reduce the opacity of some of those. All right, so that's actually looking pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and zoom in and get a little bit more of a feel for that. Now we're gonna start to get into some interesting things with the um, colors here. We're gonna set this blend mode to lighten. And we're gonna pick some uh, interesting colors to do a little bit of um, casting. Let's try a blue. Let's make this a little more interesting. And also, let's adjust our angle a little bit so that it's not quite as uniformed. And that starts to get interesting. And let's try another color. And let's go with an even paler blue in there. And now we'll do a few bit of optic effects. All right, so that's a bit interesting there. Let's go ahead and uh, put some backfill behind our um, character here. We'll do this in the form of a radiant gradient fill. And um, let's see how we want to handle this. Let's go with... That just doesn't seem to be popping enough. Let's go with something. I don't really want to go with any more purple in this. We've got enough of that. I want to contrast that. And we might have to go with something just um, more bright in general to accomplish that. see actually for our purposes uh, this magenta kind of color will work a little bit and we'll make some adjustments and see what we can do Kind of like it with the hard light and I'll just tone it down a bit to maybe um, 70. I like that. And now there are some other images that we're going to use to kind of really start to bring this together. So we're just going to scale this Stardust image. Yep, there we go. Then we're going to play with the blend mode here. Oh yeah, I like what that's doing already. We're going to apply a mask to that. And now we're going to paint some of that in. And we're going to find some grunge brushes that will help us with that. And we're going to duplicate this now as we're going to have that going under and over and we're going to paint some of it out on the So high, I'm hypnotized
What's up is down, what's left is right Chasing stars and holding view I can't see the end, but we'll see it through effect by sourcing from the genes and you can kind of get a feeling for some of what we're creating here sourcing from the skin the hair We're creating a little bit of a disintegration effect, if you will. And we're going to use some other brushes here as well. Nothing that aggressive. Um, we're going to size this down. We're going to source. Whoops. Set our opacity just a little lower. So I think we've done a decent bit of that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a mask on top of our model. And we're actually going to um, use a black brush and we're going to uh, effectively disintegrate and mask out some stuff just like around edges and throughout and we're going to do this randomly and sporadically we're going to adjust our brush size as we do it and we're going to have um, parts of our model disintegrate out and fade away so that looks like um, the model is being um, you know um, disintegrated or um, you know, assembled and reassembled in a teleporter, a tractor beam like scenario. So that's kind of what a little bit of what we're going for here and what we're attempting to uh, create. And we could do this um, in whatever level of um, detail we want in terms of adjusting, doing different brushes. But again, like sometimes less is more with some of these things, and there's a tendency to take them too far. Uh, from what I've seen so um, you know just use your own discretion and create the kind of look that you want and uh, what you think looks good with that and just you know kind of have a feel for what you want the image to be where that's concerned um, this is actually coming out pretty okay for me I think I want to do more around these shoes um, a little bit just um, and I'm gonna adjust the opacity in some of these areas I want to just create a few more pieces that are gone from the model just to um, create the illusion here. Again, you don't want to necessarily get overly aggressive with this, but um, the less uniform it can look, the better. Okay. 
And what's your, uh, if you're using a wake on brush like I am, adjusting the flow for this can uh, make for some, you know, um, interesting scenarios and you can get a little bit more out of this where that's concerned if you want to do that. You can take this as far as you think you need to to create an interesting image. Uh, that's kind of the beauty of it and the beauty of doing this type of photo manipulation and art. There's not really a right or wrong to it, so um, that's definitely a good thing and um, can really just make it something fun to relax on you know, when you're working and not something that you necessarily have to make um, a certain way for a client. You know, you can do something personal if you want to create this type of artwork. And this is the kind of thing that is, uh, you know, fun for me personally to work on uh, and do stuff on the channel for you guys. And this will probably end up also being a speed art video. I'm really looking forward to actually doing that for this one because I like where this is going. There's some things that, um, in theory, I might have done differently on this um, for myself, and maybe I'll go back and do that as like final artwork for uh, DeviantArt or something. But I think overall that this is, um, you know, something that I'm going to be happy with when it's all said and done, and that I like the overall direction that we're heading. disbursement there's all kinds of um, little creative tweaks and twist you can do with this um, and one of the ones I'm doing is I'm actually taking and sourcing more stuff from different parts of the image and pulling it into the um, air to just create more of this um, you know feeling of being uh, disassembled disembodied and creating you know, as uh, much of that feeling as I can, I want you to kind of feel like different body parts are being pulled throughout here and that there's that sense of disruption. Like there's pieces of you that are missing um, or something like that. Um, you know, I think that's... Um, a really good component to have in a piece like this to uh, you know make it feel uh, more alive more have more depth be more interesting So I kind of like where this is um, where this is going now. Uh, there are a few more things I kind of want to do. Let's go ahead and get a big beam of light going here.
So one of the things I'm going to do is, um, first of all, get the full opacity so that I can see it. And then I'm going to do some uh, selective masking to this. We'll just go ahead and, um, we can use this brush, that's fine. We'll just set it to 100. Obviously, we'll get rid of the hard edges that we don't need. Clearly. And now this opens up some other interesting options. I want to see what um, different things look like here. Because there's a lot of different directions you can take this. I kind of like um, how subdued it looks with Lighten. And that some of those elements are there. But they're a lot more subtle. But I think I can achieve some of that with Screen. Especially if I tone down the opacity. So that this is much less pronounced. Maybe to something like 50. And then with some more selective masking. I can pull this back. And I probably take my masking down from 100% to something more subtle like 20. So that I can blend it the way that I want. And just make certain areas more subtle. Bring certain areas back a bit. And make them more pronounced. And I just want to kind of keep this stuff organized. Save. So yeah, I like where this is going. I really do. We've got something really interesting and unique going on here. And the smoke, again, it just adds a whole nother uh, dimension to everything. And it makes it more interesting. Now, um, something that we saw when we were doing this was that darkening everything uh, made this pop a lot more. And I've been thinking on that and how I might want to um, adjust some things. So even though I would usually save this for the end, I want to um, see how it looks now. I want to do a black overlay layer, and I want to adjust the uh, opacity on that and see what areas of the image are improved from it. And I can do some uh, masking based on that and just see what can be darkened up and what I want to pop and how it affects everything. So there are parts of this that I like and there are things that I don't. Uh, if we look at this, this feels you know maybe a little too bright overall and this feels a little too dark. But that already tells me some interesting things and I can go ahead and I can work from there. So I'll take this at 30 and there are things that I will do here and it will create a more interesting overall um, image by me doing so. And you see what's happening here and how we're kind of uh, painting with and painting away from the light. So that's making this very interesting. So let's look at a before and after with that part of it. Still looks cool, interesting, but it's not popping. And that is popping and we like that. So let's also do um, another overlay layer. And let's just uh, paint with um, a nice round uh, white brush. Set at 20% and see what else we can make pop. Zoom in a little bit here. All right, maybe we set that at 10%. Alright, so I think I'm satisfied with that as an overall image. I don't think there's really anything else much that I want to do to this. Um, you know, this I think is a pretty good example of some techniques we went over with uh, color and light casting, compositing, and photo manipulation in general. We uh, saw some masking in there. 
manipulating individual brush elements and creating the dispersion technique using the clone stamp and using brushes and grunge tools. So I think that we covered a lot in this particular photo manipulation tutorial. Um, I literally did this off of the top of my head, um, just playing around and walking you guys through this. I like doing that style of tutorial because you're able to see the creative process. You're able to see uh, me make mistakes. I don't do a lot of editing to this. The most I do is try and like speed certain things up things like that and add some background music so that's not boring while I'm working on stuff because the hardest part for me is this doesn't take me this long but I have to explain everything and I also have to you know try to talk so that there aren't long pauses that I could just be working on and that's why I like about some of the speed art videos that I do is because I'm able to just show you guys a process without having to necessarily explain everything and you can follow along um, but I do both because I think it's important for those who may not be able to pick it up by watching to hear me talk about what tools I'm using, um, how they work, and what these techniques are called, and I think that that's very helpful. But you guys can tell me what you like about the tutorials or the styles of them in the comment section below, and let me know um, how you would like them uh, approached going forward. Anyway, this has been a Photoshop CC um, photo manipulation tutorial. Um, again, the techniques in this tutorial are not limited to uh, Photoshop CC. We didn't really use any of the special features there. Uh, these would be in, I would imagine, Photoshop uh, CS3 through uh, CS6. So if you're using older versions of Photoshop, you could still follow along with this tutorial and create images exactly like this uh, with your own preferences and so on. Anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed everything in this tutorial. Let me know if you have questions in the comment section below. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other great creative content for graphic design and Photoshop on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today.